Hey guys, here we are, chapter 13, section one. Chapter 13, we're gonna talk about climate, climate change. Now today's is gonna to be broken down into a A and a B. So if you wanna push all the way through it, you can, but it's gonna be two sets of Cornell notes. Your essential question for section A, why do different parts of the earth have different climates? You know, everywhere doesn't have the same climate. Why? What's the issue? Now, climate itself is just the average weather conditions over a long period of time, at least decades. Okay, we're like on 30 years or more. It's been said that climate is what you expect, but weather is what you get. You know, what's happening out there right now is weather, but what happens this time of year over a long period of time is what we refer to as climate. It's determined by a variety of factors. These are gonna include latitude, the global air circulation, ocean circulation patterns, topography, are you up on a mountain, down in a valley, near the ocean, um, solar activity, as well as volcanic activity. However, of all of those things which tend to dictate what your climate's going to be, the most important of those factors, latitude. Latitude is king, or your distance from the equator. When it really comes down to it, and we talk about climate, it's really gonna come down to temperature and precipitation. But the biggest factor in those is going to be your latitude, where you fall. Now latitude, these are the lines that go around the globe. They're the ones that go around it circling, big at the equator and get smaller and smaller until the tippy top. They are latitude. The equator is zero. You can kind of look at the picture back here. And the most northerly point is going to be the North Pole, 90 degrees. And the most southerly is going to be the South Pole at 90 degrees. So between zero and 90 north, zero and 90 south. It strongly affects climate because the amount of solar energy an area of Earth receives depends on its latitude, what it really comes down to. Now we're going to talk about things in the low latitudes, basically from zero to 30, and the higher latitudes. And when it comes down to it, we really break it down. Zero to 30s are going to be the tropics, from 30 to 60, the temperate, some people say 50, somewhere around there, and then from 60 up is the Arctic or the cold regions. We have tropical, temperate, and cold. Doesn't matter if you're going north or south more solar energy falls near the equator than closer to the poles. So the incoming solar energy is concentrated at a smaller area near the equator. And right around the equator, it's 12 hours of daylight, 12 hours of dark. Basically, if you live near the equator, the sun comes up at 6 a.m. and the sun goes down at 6 p.m. It's pretty much 12 and 12 all the way around. And temperatures there year round are high year round. It's basically summer all year. They don't talk about summer or winter. They may tie up a rainy season, a cool season, or a wet season and a dry, not, sorry. They may have a rainy season and a dry season, but they don't have summers and winters. They don't have a cool period. It's warm year round. Now in the higher latitudes, now once again, we're kind of going from 30, we're skipping up to at least above 50. Here, the sun is lower in the sky. You're near the equator, you look up and the sun is directly overhead. You get up in the higher latitudes and the sun only comes up here. Like here in Florida, in winter time, the sun doesn't go up as high. But in the higher latitudes, it never gets up as high. So, the sunlight hits the earth at an oblique angle. It looks like an oval. It hits more like a circle near the equator, but it's more at an oblique angle like an oval, so the light gets spread out. It's spread over a larger surface area, a circle versus an oval, you know, a circle or an oval. It's a larger space that it hits it at these higher latitudes. So the yearly average temperatures are actually much lower at the higher latitudes. They're not getting as much solar energy, not as much energy transfers into lower temperatures. In the higher latitudes, the hours of daylight also vary. 
So at 45 degrees north and south, this is getting near the top of the United States, if you will, there can be as much as 16 hours of daylight during the summer, but as little as only eight hours of sunlight in the winter. And even in Florida, we know that. In the summertime, it's sunlight, you know, the sun comes up at six and it doesn't go down till 8.30 or something. But in the winter time, sun doesn't come up till 7.30, in the morning and it sets by 5 30 or something at night you know we get these much shorter days during the winter so the yearly temperature range near the poles winds up being fairly large you know in the winter time they can get almost no sun and it's incredibly cold in the summertime they get lots of sun and it stays warmer longer now it never gets as hot but in the picture we're looking at here, this is the idea. You get vertical rays. The sun rays hit pretty much straight on. So if you look, it winds up being like a circle of light hitting that area in its intensity. But towards the northern and southern, you notice how that light has to spread around the curve. So it winds up spreading out into more like an oval. One of our labs, this chapter, kind of details this so you can see mathematically what is happening with the energy from the sun as it hits the surface of the planet. But this is the big difference in latitude, which is why latitude is so huge. The closer you are to the equator, the hotter it is. The farther away from the equator you get, typically the cooler it gets. Now the next one is global air circulation. Now, there are three important properties of air that illustrate how the circulation affects our climate. Number one, cold air sinks. It is denser than warm air, and as it sinks, it compresses, and then it begins to warm up. Warm air rises, so warm air rises, cold air sinks. These are two important things. As it expands, it cools off as well. Yeah, because it's rising, it's getting cooler, and it begins to condense. It condenses enough, and then it sinks back down. Also, warm air can hold more water vapor than cold air. These are the three factors. Warm air rises, cold air sinks, and warm air can carry more warm water or more water vapor than cold air. So as this warm air rises and moves up, it cools off, condenses, and it tends to rain. So we tend to get rain near the areas where the air is rising. Anyway, those three factors are very, very important. Now, solar energy, the sun warms the ground. In turn, it begins to warm the air above it. That warm air then rises and cool air moves in to replace it. And we wind up getting a convection current. And these big convection currents we call wind. So the air rises, cool air comes in to fill that gap. So down here you feel the wind. Now because the earth is rotating and at different latitudes get different amounts of solar energy, we get these big global atmospheric circular currents. And this circulation pattern determines our precipitation pattern. So the warm air is rising, cools off, and it tends to rain there, and this creates wind. But since the earth is spinning, we wind up getting a Coriolis effect. And it looks like the picture back here. Because the earth is spinning and that air is rising and falling, now it tends to rise at the equator and fall around the 30 parallels. So in the tropics, we get trade winds, and then in the temperate zones, we get the westerly. So in other words, the wind tends to blow from the east in the trade winds, and then it blows from the west in the westerlies, and then at the poles, we get easterly. But we get these huge Hadley cells, as those red and blue lines on the outside, where the air rises. You see at the equator, it rises, it pushes off, and then it falls at the 30th parallel, and then it rushes back in to fill. But this but these are our large global air circulation patterns. So the intense energy is striking the Earth's surface, it warms, cools off, drops down, etc. So as a result, areas near the equator tend to get large amounts of rain. 
near the equator, around the ocean. It's warm, more moist air, but as it cools off, it rains. So it tends to rain pretty much near where the air is rising. Now that cool air wants to sink, but it can't sink right over the equator because more warm air keeps pushing it off. So it kind of gets pushed away all the way over to the 30th parallel by and large. So right around 30 north and 30 south, that cool air falls right there. So where this air sinks, and now then it begins to warm up. So this dry air moves across the surface, causing water to evaporate. We tend to get very dry conditions. It tends to be warm and moist near the equator around the 30th parallel. That cool dry air is falling. It begins to warm up. Now it's warm and it begins to soak up the moisture. So we tend to get dry areas. Our deserts, by and large, tend to fall on the 30th parallel, like the Sahara Desert or down in Australia, or even in America, our Arizona, Nevada. These tend to be near these 30th parallels because of these global wind patterns. Now we have areas of high and low pressure. Air descending at the 30th north and 30th south latitude, it either moves towards the equator or towards the pole. Just as it falls, just like water spilling, right? It spreads. Some of it spreads towards the equator, some of it spreads towards the pole because of air falling. And then at 60 degrees north and 60 degrees south, that air collides with cold air coming down from the poles. So at the top of the poles, cold air is sinking. So at the 60th, it's running into that cold air. So the warm air rises and most of this uplifted air gets forced towards the pole. So this air is coming down, but it's hitting very cold air. So it rises up over it, heading towards the poles, either the north or the south. Then that cold, dry air descends at the poles and right around our poles, these are essentially very cold deserts. So once again, at the 60th, the air is coming down and it moves this way. Well, the air coming down from here is very cold, so it rises up, cools off, and as it drops, it descends right at the poles. We have air dropping at the poles, air rising at the equators, and then falling again around the 30th parallels. Guys, that takes us through climate section A. Come back next time, we'll look at climate section B and we'll look at the southern oscillation. Take care, we'll see you.